Hi guys, me again. Uh, sorry this video took so long. I was really, really ill all week. Um, I said it would be up in a couple of days. I lied. If you've not seen me before, I'm Claire. Um, I did do another video before this just introducing myself and explaining my situation. I kind of recommend you watch that before you watch this one because it will probably make more sense to you. But for those of you who saw my first video, welcome back. And like I said, I'm going to talk about Brenda and how she is now that she's end of life care and the dementia is pretty much as bad as it can get. There's quite a lot to go through, um, so I won't go into too much detail about each thing. If there's anything you want me to go into more detail about, just let me know in the comments section. Some of the things I'm going to talk about are a little bit disgusting. Um, they're not very nice, maybe a little embarrassing for some people. Um, but I don't like to sugarcoat things, you know, these things are real life and if you want to know more about dementia, these are the things that you kind of need to understand that do happen. A lot of things involving her personal care and whatnot. So I won't go into too much detail about them, um, but they are a little bit, <laughs> a little bit disgusting at times. So Brenda has had dementia for a very long time now. She has mixed dementia, which is basically vascular dementia and Alzheimer's. And she pretty much ticks all the boxes for somebody with Alzheimer's. A lot of the things I'm gonna to discuss today is very common with Alzheimer's and with other types of dementia as well, but particularly Alzheimer's. She's on very little medication now. Um, she's on a anti-hallucination which she's been on for a very long time. She's on morphine, a couple of reasons. One is just to basically calm her down, she can get quite anxious. And second of all, because of her movement, which I will go into more detail in a little bit, she can be, we don't know if she's in much pain at all with her movement. Um, she does scream out quite a lot, so it's a little hard to tell. So the morphine just kind of calms her down and keeps her relaxed and any pain that she might get that would help with that and she's also on a antibiotic which just prevents urine infections just because she's prone to them all her medication is liquid and has been for a long time because she's unable to swallow solid food and, and obviously tablets would be part of that um she's very in her own little world now um she talks very little when she does talk it's very muddled, very confused, it's it's not a full sentence, you know, it doesn't make any sense at all. You really have to try and decipher what it is that she's trying to say. And if indeed whether she's actually talking to you or not, um, she does hallucinate, she's hallucinated for a very long time. So obviously sometimes she's not even talking to you, even if you're right in front of her. She doesn't often know that you're there, which sounds a little strange to us, but she's really in her own little world um a lot of the words aren't real words she has kind of different levels um one minute and it you find in brenda's world it is minute by minute um you know she can change really that quickly so one minute she'll be very kind of clear and concise on what what she's saying although the words might not be the right words and in the right order, you can kind of understand what she's getting at. And then other times it is like like baby talk, like goo goo gaga. It is just noises. And it really is hard to kind of understand what it is that she's trying to say. She'll lay there a lot of the time. She'll have full blown conversations to herself. And you just have to let her get on with it. You know, she's not harming anyone. Um, we're kind of used to it now. Our lounge is quite big and she's kind of one side of it in her bed and we're the other side and we've got our sofa and television and whatnot. So I can constantly look over at her and check that she's okay. I can get up and give her a drink or have a little talk with her or a little cuddle or something like that. Um, and it's, it's just nice that it's all kind of in one room and it makes it a lot easier for me. And she's not by herself then. Her swallowing is really, really bad. 
it is just the dementia she's basically kind of forgotten how to swallow um you know she all her food is liquidized her drinks are thickened up we've got a thickener that we put in all her drinks um it just helps it kind of all go down a little bit nicer she can't kind of chew properly she can't work that out she can't work out how to swallow so she swallows a lot of air down um and obviously chokes a hell of a lot um she has quite bad coughing fits which are quite scary not only for her but for us as well so and that's another reason why we would give her morphine it is just to kind of calm and relax her um because obviously she can't she can't think how we think if we're choking on our food we think to ourselves right you know take a deep breath and, and then you'll cough cough outwards but she can't think like that she's not got the capability she just keeps swallowing or you know and you can see in her little face that she's getting really upset and panicky and and rightly so because it is pretty terrifying um and as time has gone on that has got worse um and the doctor said it would happen you know food and drink starts to go into her lungs where she kind of swallows it down the wrong hole and and you can kind of hear it it's almost like a rattle um it's really really horrid but it's just what happens and and unfortunately that could well be the thing that kills her you know she's basically drowning on food and drink obviously we feed her she can't feed herself um we just have to be nice and slow nice and calm and you know not rush her too much um it can can be frustrating you know we all have bad days and you don't want her to choke um it is it is horrible it is scary and and some days you might be in a rush i hate to say it you know but we all have days like that maybe we're not feeling great ourselves or we're just a bit fed up and and the choking starts and you think oh god you know i haven't got time for this <laughs> i can't be bothered with this you know it, it can be really difficult but you just have to you know persist with it she she doesn't mean to do it and she doesn't understand what she's doing so it's not her fault you just you just have to be patient apart from the swallowing probably our biggest challenge that we face um is her movement she's been in bed now for over a year she used to walk really well she would walk long distances you know even when i first met her i mean her would go for a walk you know i'd, I'd take her out now and again and, and we'd go for walks and stuff and she was fine you know physically she was really fit but then literally and it pretty much happened overnight she just basically forgot how to walk you know you would try and explain to her you need to put one foot in front of the other you need to lift that foot up put it down on the floor take that step forward and she just couldn't grasp it at all um and literally within maybe two weeks she went from being able to walk perfectly fine by herself you know was maybe a little unsteady at times but generally could walk reasonably well to literally two of us just to stand her up it would take two of us to pick her up and just to change her clothes or to change her pad so we decided quite quickly that we was going to put her to bed you know not only to help her but to help us because it was hurting our backs and someone was going to get hurt and obviously since then her movement has got worse and worse at first we would kind of do a lot of physio with her we'd move her arms around we'd do like arm exercises with her but she's become so rigid and it is the dementia you know the saying is that if you don't use it you lose it and that is true and it's certainly true in the case with brenda but it also is a lot to do with her mind and she's just completely rigid and i can't explain to you how rigid she is both of her hands are like this and that's how they stay um you can't to get them fingers open is pretty much impossible and she screams out she absolutely hates it so we put like big fluffy bed socks we roll them up and put them in her hands so she's got that to hold on to not only to prevent her nails from digging into her skin 
but just because it will feel nice for her and it will give her something to hold and it's like a comfort thing um but it it really is horrible in there and you know we we try and clean and stuff in in her hands but it is really really difficult just to lift her arm up just to give her a wash under her arm it's literally impossible um she is so incredibly strong and again with dementia they often become very strong like this and it is really hard and of course you can't explain to her how to do it you know we try and explain to her that we're going to give her a wash you know Brenda you need to lift your arm up we need to wash underneath we need to put some talcum powder underneath your arms but it just doesn't happen a lot of the time we used to bed bath her every single day head to toe full bed bath now we've cut it down to three days a week just because it is so impossible to do it she hates it she screams out she you know she finds it painful and it's very kind of upsetting for her and for us it is such hard work it's like a real workout you know you're really fighting just to pull her arm away from her body it is just impossible her legs are like clamped together we have to put a pillow in between her legs and her, her ankle just because her legs are literally clamped so tight um, and you know especially on her ankles she would get really bad pressure sores so we put a, a pillow in between there but it is literally awful it takes two of us to pull her legs apart it sounds horrible it sounds like we're you know really picking on her but we're not you know we, we have to get that cushion in there we have to give her legs a wash um and it is it is so so difficult another problem is her skin her skin gets so dry what we kind of don't appreciate is every day we're moving around we're taking our clothes on and off um and now because of that our skin is shredding you know our skin constantly being exfoliated Brenda isn't moving she just lays there you know she doesn't even lift her arm she doesn't roll onto her side or anything like that she just is completely rigid lays there still all the time so her skin isn't getting exfoliated so over time her skin builds up and builds up and builds up and the only way I can describe it, it sounds awful, is it's kind of like elephant skin. It's that real thick texture. Um, and it gets really dry and sore in places, especially on her face. She gets really bad sores, just where it, the build-up of the skin is really bad. And then eventually that comes off and, of course, it leaves like an open sore. So we really have to look after her skin and, and give it a good kind of rub over you know with the flannel and everything when we're washing her and put plenty of cream on but it really is bad and the skin that she does shed gets absolutely everywhere i know it's a little grim but i find it all over the floor i'm constantly hoovering the bed around her because this excess skin is just everywhere you know you change her bed clothes and it just is skin flying everywhere it's really really horrible another thing that's happened probably over the last couple of months um is it sounds a little strange but her left nostril has basically collapsed it sounds a little strange but it's just where she would constantly do this it sounds really disgusting because i've had a cold but you get the idea she was just sniffing and sniffing and sniffing all the time it's almost like a like a breathing thing she couldn't work out how to breathe through her mouth so she would through her nose all the time and the left side has literally collapsed she has no nostril um you know i, I get cotton buds and things like that and, and rolled up bits of tissue and sounds horrible but to clean her nose out um because obviously she can't do anything like that for herself so i do all that sort of thing for her um and i try and get it up that nostril but she doesn't like it it's, it's obviously not very comfortable for her um but just to try and reopen it but it really has collapsed and it's 
quite a weird thing I've, I've never seen that before on anybody but it's just where she's continuously she doesn't realize she's doing it you know she's got kind of no concept that she's doing that the last thing i want to talk to you about today is probably the the grimmest <laughs> it's a bit disgusting but it is her pooing obviously she's doubly incontinent and has been for a long long time um but her pooing is a big problem just because she's basically forgotten how to push um you know she can't contract and she can't push anything out so we give her laxatives just a mild laxative every single morning with her breakfast and over time it just comes out naturally she doesn't even know it's happening um just every time we change her pad you know we clean her and put a clean pad on and she's kind of none the wiser unfortunately it's not always as simple as that um she can get constipated which we really try and avoid it doesn't happen that often but it does happen so the doctor just prescribed to us a suppository it's really easy to use i i do it for her um we don't have to have a nurse come in or anything like that um the doctor's okayed that and, and showed me how to do it it is dead easy you just pop it in and give it 20 minutes and normally it will help her pass anything that she has to pass but like I said she doesn't know how to push half the time she doesn't even know what's going on doesn't know that anything's happening doesn't feel any pain from it sometimes she does scream out um, but it's kind of be expected you know it's, it is quite intrusive if the suppository doesn't work and it is very rare we've probably only had to do this maybe three times in the whole time that she's been in bed um, it's not a common occurrence thank god but if she can't push it out she the suppository hasn't worked unfortunately we do have to go in and get it um it sounds awful and to be honest it is awful the doctor has okayed this like i said it is not something we do regularly but we do have to do it it can be very dangerous if we were to leave it all in there like I said at the beginning of the video, it's, there are some certain things that aren't nice that we have to deal with and that I will discuss. I know it will probably offend a few people, but I am going to discuss them. Um, it is real life. It is dementia, it, especially when you have dementia at, at this level. And she is severe. Um, most people who have dementia wouldn't kind of make it this far. They wouldn't live as long as she has you know she she eats very little she drinks very little she's absolutely tiny she's so skinny she's literally skin and bone um how she's still alive i don't know really and it's really sad to witness but she's still alive and you know i'm happy to have her and i'm happy to look after her i hope this has helped i hope it wasn't too grim for you um i will obviously post more videos i don't know what my next one's going to be about yet i haven't i haven't decided there's a couple of things i want to cover so i will get one up as soon as i can hopefully it won't take as long as it did last time because i was poorly but i'm all better now and um yeah i will i will do another video soon take care and see you soon bye guys